Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave from the Camera Store and today we're talking about a brand new lens from Lawa, the 25mm .95 for Micro Four Thirds. So this is it, this is the brand new Lawa 25mm .95 APO lens, which is really, really fast aperture lens. Now it's designed for the Micro Four Thirds camera, so it's going to work with Olympus and some Blackmagic cameras, and of course the GH6, which I'm using today. Now this gives us some really nice options for really fast prime lenses. And I've been really doing a lot of those lately. We've reviewed some other lenses in the past, the 35mm .95 for instance, and this one's sort of going to follow suit to that, but for Micro Four Thirds. Now, of course, this being a Micro Four Thirds lens, we are looking at a 50mm equivalent lens on a full-frame camera. Now, if you've been following our channel for a while, you know that 35mm is my preferred focal length, so 50mm is a bit of a stretch for me. So let's see if Lawa can win me over with this ultra-fast prime lens as we explore this lovely neighborhood of Inglewood on a great sunny day here in Calgary. Lately, we've been seeing a trend for manufacturers to make sort of smaller, lighter weight lenses. And the reason behind this is that we don't want to carry around as much weight or we're going to be floating these lenses on gimbals. So the less weight, the better. Now, Lawa didn't get the memo. They, see, they seem to make really solid, well-built lenses, but they're very, very heavy for their size, I'm finding. This 25 millimeter 0.95 lens weighs in at 570 grams. Now, that's fairly heavy. It's the first thing you notice when you pick up this lens is just how solid this lens really is. When you're using this lens, it is, of course, is completely manual, and that includes the manual focus ring. Now, what I'm finding is that the focus ring on this is really nice and smooth. It's got just the right amount of drag when I am moving it around. Now, it does have a very long throw, which is very typical of a manual focus lens, especially with Lawa. It's about 270 degrees, I'm figuring, to go from min to max focusing. So, if you're going to do those long focus pulls, you're not going to be able to do it with one hand without re-gripping. Now, close to the body is the aperture ring. Now, it goes from 0.95, of course, all the way up to f11. I do find that it is a bit on the thin side, a little bit small. Now it is a clickless aperture, so there are no graduations as we move from min to max. It does have some grooves to it to help give you a little bit of grip, but I wish they made it a little bit larger. Now if we turn our attention to the front of the lens, we do have a 62mm filter thread. Now this lens is of course all metal construction, however it is a, not a weather resistant lens, so keep that in mind when you're using it. Now let's dig a little deeper into the lens itself. Now the standout spec of this lens is the fact that it's a 0.95 aperture. Now in the world of lenses, that is a very fast aperture. In fact, like my shirt only goes to f1.8. So this being a 0.95 aperture lens gathers a ton of light, which is going to make it great for low light performance and also improve that shallow depth of field that we want to achieve with a lens like this. This lens does achieve a very nice bokeh look. If you look at these shots here from the out of focus areas, have a really nice, pleasing sort of nice smoothness to it. And that's due to the nine bladed aperture that this lens has. Now the other part that's impressive about this lens is that it's an APO lens, and that stands for apochromatic. Now it's a big word that I have trouble saying half the time, but it's an advanced lens design which is really there to prevent chromatic aberration. When you look at really high contrast things, things reflections on glass and chrome, where we have a really hard transition between light and dark, we often see a very harsh magenta or a greenish hue. And that's because the wavelengths hit the sensor at a different time and we end up with these kind of odd colors and fringing. Now we want to prevent that as much as we can, so a little more advanced optical design is there to prevent that. If you take a look at these examples here, where I'm really putting this lens through a torture test, they're not my best images, but it certainly shows off that this lens is capable of handling chromatic aberration very well. So we have a great lens design, we have a very fast aperture, but what kind of image quality are we going to get from this? We're going to talk about that next. All specs aside, what does this lens produce as far as image goes? Now the image quality I'm getting out of this lens is very typical of what I'm finding with Lawa. When I shoot this lens at 0.95, which you're going to do because you have a 0.95 lens, and especially when you get up close, that depth of field is very, very shallow. But at 0.95, that's where this lens is sort of at its weakest. Now I don't mean weakest in a bad way, because we have a certain look to this lens. We have the sort of desaturated look a little bit, and a very, very shallow depth of field, almost a kind of dreamy look to it. If we stop this lens down to 2.8 or beyond, it really sharpens up very nicely and you can attain some really nice results. What I'm finding is that the image quality, the contrast, the saturation is very good on this lens. And flare is very well handled. Take a look at this example here of this starburst and you'll see what I'm talking about. So overall, when it comes to the image quality of this lens, it's very typical of what I'm finding with Lawa. At 0.95, it has a really unique character to it that I love, and I think it's exciting to actually shoot with and play with, and it really brings out sort of a creative side to you. But if you step it down to 2.8, this lens can deliver some fantastic results. 
So what's this lens like to use from a photographer standpoint? Well, the whole experience of shooting with this lens is pretty decent. I do like the manual focus. Now it does slow your pace down a little bit because you have to take that care and attention. You're going to be using focus peaking or another focusing aid if you're going to use this camera and focus, especially at the lower apertures where depth of field comes into play. You can certainly do some other techniques where you're trap shooting or just shooting from the hip at a certain aperture, but if you want to focus, you have to spend a little more time working with this lens. Now, the clickless aperture does drive me a little bit crazy, I have to admit. I've bumped it a few times now and I've hit where I want to shoot at 0.95, I'm actually at 1.4 or vice versa. I really wish I could lock that in. The other thing is that when you are shooting with this lens, it's completely manual connection with the camera. There's no electronic connection whatsoever. So there's no metadata included with this. So you don't know what you shot your aperture at when you're shooting with this lens. That can be a little bit frustrating at times. As much as this clickless aperture bugs me a little bit from a photographer standpoint, it does have some logic when it comes to videography. From a video standpoint, I see where Lauer's going and I think that's part of the key design of this lens. As much as the stepless aperture does kind of drive me crazy from a photographer standpoint, I do find that videographers are going to like this. And the reason is, is that if they are doing sort of drastic light transitions, they can make adjustments on the fly without that hard step between 5.6, f2.8, what have you. We don't see these hard graduations, we just see a nice smooth flow from one to the other. Well, our shooting day is wrapping up here. So what do I think about this Laowa 25mm 0.95 for the Micro Four Thirds system? Well, it's not my first time shooting with Laowa and it has a very similar feeling to what I had when I shot with the 35.9. I'm actually enjoying it a lot more than I expected it to. Even the 50 millimeter focal length is growing on me subtly. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not giving up my 35 yet, but I am enjoying this 50 millimeter equivalent lens. Now, part of what I like about it is the whole experience. It's a lot more fun, I'm finding. It's much more interactive when you're working with a completely manual lens. I have to go out and manually focus everything. I need to interact with my camera more than just simply push a button, wait for it to autofocus and click and away I go. So I'm spending a little more time taking care and attention to taking photographs. So some of the idiosyncrasies set aside, I'm ultimately really enjoying what I'm getting out of this lens. It is a fun experience to work with. The image quality at the end of the day is very pleasing, even when it's at its weakest at 0.95. And I appreciate the build quality that Laowa has put into it and that they're pushing the envelope all the time with their lenses. Now, I of course want to know what you guys think of this lens. Does this even interest you whatsoever? If you're a Micro Four Thirds user, are you going to be picking one up? Or am I making too big a deal about the clickless or declickless aperture? Make sure you leave comments down below. Follow us both on Instagram and please subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We'll catch you again next time. Point nine five aperture. <laughs> Hey, thanks for sticking around and watching this episode. If you want to see more of our current content, click up here. And if you're a Canadian and want to shop local, check out thecamerastore.com down here.